treat, folks, because my first guest tonight is an Academy Award-winning actress you know from Monster, Mad Max Fury Road, and Atomic Blonde. Her new film is Bombshell. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Charlize Theron. <laughs> Disappointment. This is so no, lovely. No, no disappointment to have Hi. Charlize Theron out here. Um, now, uh, uh, I know you're, you're out here. Uh, we're talking about a bunch of things, but you're out here to talk about uh, your new film, Bombshell, yeah. which is is about uh, basically the, sort of the end of Roger Ailes' career at Fox News and the women who stood up to him, including Megyn Kelly, who you play. But uh, congratulations! I know that you just got nominated for a Golden Globe yeah. for that performance. Yeah. It was really extraordinary. And a SAG, and a SAG award, I think. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's really great. The, it's, listen, um, the alternative could be so much worse. But the fact that you, you know, you don't make, I think this job is so incredible, and I say to my kids every day, find something that you love, because it will never feel like a job. And so that, to me, is the reward. And so all of this extra stuff is so lovely. But the cast um, nomination that we got, uh, SAG cast nomination was really special to me because this is such an ensemble cast. Yeah, and it's an extraordinary ensemble it's cast. An extraordinary He's... ensemble, so that one was really special. Well, you got particularly excited, I know, <laughs> for the Golden Globe nomination because you... No, that's the SAG. That's the SAG? That was the SAG you cast posted, one, yeah. You posted online mm. uh, a video of you reacting to it yeah. to finding out that y'all have been nominated, yeah. but you edited out the middle. Can I... Can wait? Let me play... Should we explain what happens or play it first? I don't think you need an explanation. I think it's quite self-explanatory. Uh, Jim? That's amazing. We just got cast! <laughs> yes! I don't have a <laughs> <laughs> We actually just got cast! I guess... I guess it didn't need an explanation. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. No. Oh, boy. Yes, yeah. yes. note Things to just... self. Note to self, don't shoot anything before you put the underwear on. That's My true. mother always told me that. <laughs> now, your uh, producer on this movie, uh, as well uh, as being, uh, you know, playing Megyn Kelly in this, and, and an extraordinary performance as Megyn Kelly. I was saying to you briefly backstage. Thank you. Um, there, are, there are amazing performances all through it. Um, uh, for instance, John Lithgow as Roger Ailes. He's amazing. And he is amazing Ailes. Sometimes you use footage of the actual Roger Ailes, like in a news archive footage, yeah. and sometimes, and but most of it's it's Lithgow playing him. But you're always Megyn Kelly, and you look so much like <laughs> Megyn Kelly. So here here's an here's a, a little <coughs> indication, and this just begins to capture. How much you look like her here. I I I have watched Megan Kelly for years. I it's have yours? interviewed. Did I just drink your water? I'm no, this so is sorry. this is yours. Oh okay. And there's tea for you here. Oh, if that's like so tea. nice. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought I was drinking yours. Which would you, would you like tea? I'm. Ter I, do you You're do? Fine. Yeah, I'll take. Both that. of them are yours. Take... Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Just trying to would not you like have honey? you get my cooties. Would you like honey? I would love some honey. <laughs> okay. All right. That's that's good. Would you like? Thank you. How do you stir that? Would you like? Yes, like a, a pen. pen. I love no, my favorite way to stir my tea. How did you know? It's a new pen. How did Straight you know? Straight out of the box. Straight out of the box. Oh, let's see how this is. Mm. Oh, delicious. Mm. Thank you. But as, as I was saying, when I when I when I watched it, yes. I mean, I, I I've interviewed her. I've had dinner with Megyn Kelly. There were times where I had to go, wait, is that Charlize or is that oh, Megyn Kelly? And sweet. not just the look, but the the demeanor, the voice. Was that as you know? Was it's? Did you have to pitch your voice down for her because you found out she's got a bit of a mannered way of speaking? Yeah, a very specific way of speaking. I have a husky voice tonight because I'm a little under the weather, but it was definitely quite a register to try and get. And she also has a very particular cadence. And 
I don't know if you've noticed this about her, but she can speak really fast. Mm. Really fast. I'm, I'm incredibly impressive when you really pay attention to it. That's the news training, I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I am a very lazy speaker, so. Mm -hmm. That's the first word that comes to mind yes. when you think Charlize Theron. Lazy. Lazy, slow speaker. Yes, exactly. Why was this, as also a producer of this film, why was this a, a, an important story to you? Why did you want to tell this? Because it, this pre-exists before the sort yeah. of the present Me Too movement. It was sort of like a, a, sh uh, a, like a foreshadowing of something to come. It really was, um, Stephen, because I, I think we forget now that we've just lived in this time for the last two years that when Gretchen Carlson stepped forward with this lawsuit at Fox um, against Roger Ailes, there really was no movement. There was no Time's Up. There was no um, Me Too. This was before Harvey Weinstein, before all of the numerous stories that we know now. And so when we, when we read it at our company, we felt like, even though it felt like, <laughs> I sometimes refer to it as an origin story, which, you know, hopefully Marvel folks will just go to see it just because they hear origin story. <laughs> um, but I do think it is, in a weird way, it is the, the, the kind of, they were the catalyst. They brought us to this place. And um, I think that the women of Fox and, and everything that happened there the, just led itself to such great storytelling because they were such an unusual cast of women to bring forward such an important story you know, a lot of those women don't like calling themselves feminists. Mm -hmm. And yet they... They're very powerful media figures. Yes, I mean, Megan hates calling, she hates the word feminist. And yet, here they are. They're the ones that kind of catapulted us into this moment where we were really having a serious conversation about the nuance and the gray of sexual harassment. Did you have a chance to talk to any of the women involved in this, uh, Gretchen Carlson or, 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 or Megan Kelly herself? Well, um... You know, Gretchen, Car Gretchen Carlson uh, has an NDA, and, and she's basically muzzled. She can't talk mm -hmm. about her story. And That's one of the reasons why it's so great to play, see Nicole Kidman play her. Yeah. Because you get to hear Gretchen Carlson tell her story. Yeah, I mean, it's... That Gretchen in her real life can't. Yeah, it's, it's also really painful, because you, you kind of just go, why can this woman not tell her story? Why are we still putting all of these mechanisms in place that are still protecting predators and these, these, these men in power who are obviously abusing their power? I mean, that's really what these NDAs are, are doing. So I'm in, in complete support of her trying to get her voice back and, and, and having her story be told. But it is a cheeky way of us saying, like, you still can't silence us all. Like, so, somehow. Well, we have, we have a clip here. Uh, you, uh, we have a clip here. Can you, can you describe what's going on here? You're in a sound booth. Yeah, um, this is a, a, a big moment where uh, Megyn Kelly took about two weeks to join the Carlson lawsuit and, and, and the reason was because she was kind of a rock star at the time at Fox. She mm -hmm. was negotiating one of the biggest contracts there and I, she had a moral dilemma. She really liked Roger Ailes because he was incredibly helpful to her career. But she also feared what I think so many women fear, which is that you're going to get ostracized and that you're going to get punished and that you're going to lose everything that you've worked so hard to achieve. So this is a scene where she finally acknowledges to one of her colleagues that she was sexually harassed by Roger Ailes 10 years ago, and she doesn't know what to do about it. Jim. I won't call you a feminist, but say there's a spectrum, you are... Roger harassed me. Ten years ago, I had turned down a law firm partnership for an entry-level job here at Fox. Roger would call me up to New York to dangle prospects. I wanted his help. Did you... Do anything? No. Will you talk? Megan? I don't know. I don't know. Has she seen it? So she, she finally, um, she posted something last weekend um, about saying that she saw it with people, with, I, I'm assuming people who are close to her and that it was incredibly emotional for her. And that, um, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I have great empathy. We have a lot of differences, but I ultimately, 
I have to acknowledge that what these women did uh, was just incredible for this movement. And the more we hear these stories, the better we are off not kind of getting into this complacency again. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. I hope this never, I wish this never happened to them, but I'm grateful that we, you know, that we can tell this story. Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a really incredible movie and full of tremendous performances. So thank you for thank the story you. that you're telling here and, and to those women for standing up. Um, we have to take a quick break, uh, but if you can stick around, you stick around too, because we'll be right back with more Charlize Theron, everybody.